I just want the audience to look, take a moment and look behind that uniform uh, and look behind the gun. And what I think they would see is a man, not a soldier. They will see a father, not a soldier. They will see a husband, not a soldier. Shooting this movie was quite an experience. The 140s lake is the three take one. Ah, uh, some seeds is a stylized drama entrenched with deep philosophy. Uh, it's a story about love, about honor and integrity. Uh, sets in the 70s during the oil boom era, a uh, decisive decade in our political history. Uh, 76 is set within the time that relationship between the North and the South is still very fragile. A young girl from the East in love with a young soldier from the middle belt. Uh, the relationship went on to prove that uh, love is stronger than our senseless uh, tribal and religious boundaries. A historical kind of story set back in 1976 that had to do with the assassination of the uh, Nigerian military president at the time. So what we did is to weave a romantic story into an event that uh, uh, occurred in this country in the in the 70s. So that way, uh, the, the the history is a pleasure to watch. And I think it's more embedded in the um, um, the women. For once, we heard the woman's side of it. You know, we hear. Of course, most of the films you hear is about a soldier or how they have lived or everything about the glory of a soldier. They do well. But you see those women there to do well. So we don't really know how much they have to sacrifice, but you know, this kind of tells the tale of that. So in the film, you'll see a bit of um, the assassination, the coup attempt, but it takes you through a journey. You know, you get a sense of, 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 of the life in the barracks. You get a sense of what the soldiers' wives had to go through. To a great extent, this movie was looking at the the, 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 the role of the woman in, 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 in the home of a traditional military uh, family. It took us about uh, two years and a bit at the pre-production stage, you know, trying to put, set everything, you know, back in time, 76, get the right cars, the right furniture, even the right paint on the walls. Okay, we had to uh, make sure the entire environment was was prepared. So we we went in search of vintage vehicles too that we renovated uh, some for several months, some for years. The one we found, we had to completely go and resuscitate the uh, the Baba from pension so that he could help us put all the hydraulics and stuff like that. So that tells you uh, how difficult it is really to. To, to make a film in Nigeria, especially if you have to make a period movie. We, we didn't have control of the streets. Sometimes we, at the time, we had to apply to the state government, uh, the other state government where we shot, to uh, apply to shoot on sanitation day and it was approved. So sometimes we go out at 6 a.m. on sanitation day to be able to uh, you know, capture the street empty and, and litter the streets with our own cast and, and props. We had to film inside the drainage and we had to prepare a drainage for filming. The army also helped us in getting even the kind of truck that was in use as of the period. The uniforms, Nigerian army uniform that were in use of the uniform, the caps and so on, is not like today. Even when we had the permission of the army, some of the things that we wanted from the army were no longer in, the, in their inventory. Uh, so we decided to go door to door, we started scouting for 
uh, historical uh, uh, materials, uh, vintage uh, properties, to be able to uh, interpret these stories. It was difficult because uh, they were not in existence anywhere, so we had to search it for sometimes for uh, several months before one item is actually, you know, uh, produced. And then we have to also get into the archives for photographs, correct photographs, dance steps, movement, and we got people. So every detail, we have to be able to research, know what the social life within the three cadres, the A, B, and the C class of Nigeria then. But there are something that you will see that Nigerians looked a little bit more healthy in the 76 than today. These are the period that almost everybody was recovering from the civil war. Where of life then was military. And then we had people, the social aspect of it, uh, the kind of dressing, the influence of uh, American culture, pop culture by then. You had the Michael Jacksons, you had James Brown, and you had all this group coming in. You know what today you people call old school, but old school is not just the music. It's also a way of, a way of life. You're going to see that there were some live footages, you know, of the events that happened during that 1976 coup that resulted in the assassination of the general, right, General Motala Mohammed. Footages of the execution, the, the announcements and all that, they were all live that were infused in this movie. So we had to create the shoes, those popular akolas. There's nowhere you had to you find it, but took photographs of it and we made them. We actually prepared them in Ibado. Got not every other thing was involved in these things. We actually had to choreograph people to walk the way people walk. Not what you people do today, you know, but uh, people who used to be called guys and chicks of those days, uh, they have a way of walking and carriage and stuff like that. We had to put all these things into consideration. I mean, we had everything from back in the days. This was set in 1976 and there will be nothing in that movie to make you think we were not in 1976. And then again, we had the issues of budget. You know, this, this is film. We shot on film. And then, uh, so we had to buy stock from abroad and then use special cameras and, and all of that. And then the shoot lasted for that long. The story is a, is a period film. Some of them were not even born in the 70s, but they were able to, to you know, to yeah, do their best in bringing these characters to life. Well, this film we were in Ibadan for six months shooting. First of all, we spent almost two months rehearsing. Basically preparations, rehearsals, military training. We took a whole long time trying to be, you know, to have some, you know, background military trainings and all of that. And that tends to put us in that military state of mind. Uh, it took us over a year and a half to get the support of the Nigerian army. The colonel assigned to us by the chief of army staff then insisted that he didn't want us to act as military people, but he wanted us to be military people on the movie. You know, so it it was really, really painstaking. Let's go! If you know you are hold, don't hold! Hold! If you hear if I'm trying that word of command, don't stop! Don't stop! Yes, sir. Come here! Wait, what, what is this? I tell you how to march in climb. Yeah, you said by the right. Shut up! By the right, you by the right. You shape by the right. And you! <laughs> be careful, though. It wasn't a joke. You had to get it right. Although after the second day of military training, I almost gave up. I was like, are you, are you serious? Is this what we have to go through? It's just a film. Can't we just film and go? We had weeks and months of drilling of military drills, having to wake up in the morning and have this quartermaster guy, whoever it was, on the barrack, screaming his voice out as if he was talking to And I'm looking at him like, hello, excuse me. <laughs> Some of us are not really soldiers here. And then they make us wake up early in the morning and go to the military barracks every day before 7 a.m. Once we walked through the gates of the barracks or got through the gates of the barracks, we stopped being civilians, we stopped being actors and we became their tools, we became soldiers. The public relation aspect of the Nigerian army is incredible. A lot of historians, a lot of, let me say, uh, people who are completely in-depth in, in our history. I think the, the army is a, is a different place now. Um, they even have uh, departments 
set up specifically to liaise with uh, civilians and um, address civilian or civil affairs. And the idea we feel that for us to collaborate with this particular organization will actually help those who brought it and also show case the Nigerian and the Nigerian light. We will see your films and we will see some of them are very strategic films and some are highly educated films. I think this film will reaffirm the belief of Nollywood. This movie, as you see it, it was totally all indigenous, you know. Both cast and crew, all indigenous. And then no foreign hand had to come in and shoot it to make it look way over the top. When these guys are out there in the battlefield fighting, when they are uh, uh, fighting in war fronts, Every incident that occurred in the battlefield, someone somewhere is paying the price. And that's why we decided our thought got stirred in the direction of the people that uh, actually get to bear this when this uh, uh, eventual loss is occurred. was written in the note. No, ma. But I felt you uncovered the plot. Any problem, sir? Just make sure my wife gets that note immediately. Five VIPs have been slated for assassination. Including the head of state. Please. Please, enough. This is Zero Alpha. A message from Captain Joseph Dewa, NOP 125 of 702 BN. It's very, very urgent and confidential for the DMI only. There was a coup today in Nigeria, which is Black Africa's biggest and richest nation and the world's eighth largest oil producer. Yes, sir. The coup now begins to look more and more like a straightforward military revolt. Why did you directly or indirectly aid those involved in the coup? I've watched it and I said, you crafted it together very well. I must say that. And I think people easily forget history. So what this film will do, among other things, it will make people remember that at a particular stage in our development, we had a situation like this.